Okay. Well, I first I would like to answer the first part, okay? Yes. And that is that in. Yeah. And um, coming from a different perspective, mm -hmm. okay? What is the end result of that end? Okay. Are you actually, are we actually selling ourselves short? Because one of the things, another thing, because I already said one of the things, another thing that the society is very, very good at is kind of turning a cultural group into pets. And um, no significant social change in the condition of that cultural group overall. But you have these pets. And they like to frame people that are not white. Or, and, and that's, again, like, that shifts over time, all the time. Some people are in, some people are out, ask the Arabs. And so they like to frame people's groups a certain way. So if the dominant white driven, white controlled media is saying to you, dangles a carrot in front of your face, okay, as a Muslim, oh, this is the way you can get our attention is by doing this, by minimizing and reducing your personhood, okay? And also what is a form of ibadah for you and for many of you, this is how you can get attention. Is it worth it? I mean, that's a good question. And I'll, I'll be honest, over the course of my 20 years in the media, um, it has been worth it at some times. I'll be honest, it has. It has been worth it. I don't know if I'd call it, I mean, I guess it is a dangling of a carrot. Maybe I just reframe it in my mind so that I can sleep better at night. Mm. Probably that's what I'm doing. Um, but I have definitely found the benefit to be part of producing such stories or to help others produce such stories because then I'm able to slide you know, other ideas and thoughts, and then like, you need to interview this person, or hey, you're doing a story about this, and I got a great person for you, and you know, she's a covered Muslim woman, but we're not, we're not gonna talk about that she's a covered Muslim woman, we're gonna talk about that she's really good at this thing, and you need to interview someone who's a mental health professional, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna send someone to you who I know who's a very good mental health professional to interview, but who happens to cover as well, and that's just, you know, and then, so it has worked in that, in that benefit, it has been helpful to be able to lay those foundational steps to be able to get where I'm hoping to help our community get. Mm. That being said, very easy to fall into the trap of, you know, it just becomes a one-time story or it's what you said. It's, it's a, it's a, it, you know, for mainstream media or for an, un, you know, a non-Muslim or um, non person of color type media. I'm not identifying it correctly, but I think you understand what I'm saying for that group it can become something that's just like a flash in the pan. And then I feel like then you didn't, you, you, it wasn't, it wasn't framed or it wasn't, it didn't work the way it should have worked. Like, you know, the whole point for me is to try to use those opportunities in a constructive way to start laying groundwork from behind the scenes where we're now talking about the work that's being done on the ground and not this one time incident. Mm -hmm. but it's hard to do that. I totally agree with you. It's very hard to do that. And too many times it's becomes, you know, it becomes a, a flash in the pan story. And, and, oh, and that's that all I want. Like, Oh, she, okay. She's, she's a, a professional, but what is it about her being covered? That is a problem with her being that professional. That's what we want. Yeah. So, yeah. Like you say, get that's eyeballs and stuff. Honestly, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sense, that, that is news. Like looking for what is the angle, what is the extra oomph that makes this person be a good interview, whether and, that's because they cover or because they have a disability or because they're a person of color or, you know, whatever it is, you know? And I don't know. get me wrong. And don't get me wrong, because I look for those angles too. <laughs> <laughs> I look for those angles too. But... Uh, what does overall? What does what does it? Who is it serving overall? And we've had those those conversations as well. And what is the what is the overall messaging that is sending? Okay, one of the things that um, I um, have an issue with, okay, is that because it's so performative and it all it often centers on mediocrity. 
okay, outside of the Ibtihaj Muhammad's, outside of the Bill Keith, Abdul Qadir's, outside of the Ilhan Omar's, and, yeah. you know, yeah. Peter, uh, uh, Johnson Harrell. The, the messaging that it sends are young Muslim women, okay, especially when it comes to things like uh, uh, you put on some makeup and somehow you're busting a stereotype. What is the stereotype about wearing makeup and getting your picture taken? How is that a stereotype? Now, I do believe that there are barriers to be broken uh, that, that Muslim women may want to break. I don't think they need, necessarily need to be broken, but that's me. But yeah. Muslim women may want to break, like, say, the fashion industry, and that's happened. Say, yeah. the modeling industry, and that has happened, okay? Yeah. But there's a difference. You said, what is the difference between busting stereotype and breaking down barriers? There is some significance in... A, 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 Muslim women covered on the cover of a magazine okay? yeah. that generally does not have them. Okay. Yeah. Can't say they haven't had covered Muslim women because you had a man all over the place. So, <laughs> it's just like, so there were yeah. men, there have been Muslim women on magazine covers. So a Muslim woman that is in hijab that's covered on a magazine cover can be a significant thing. It can be a barrier that is broken because that mag, that uh, magazine doesn't generally do that. What yeah. happens in the industry, it may produce that, okay? It may be a thing where it's just like you said, that flash in the pan, you know, having the, you know, that's the artistic it thing now to have a covered Muslim woman going like, you know, <laughs> and then they'll move on, okay? But that's not busting a stereotype. That's not saying that that, that industry is not racist. Is not xenophobic, is not Eurocentric, is it's not saying that. It's saying that in this case, this, this happened, this barrier was broken. And what's going to happen after that? Because once a barrier is broken, that doesn't mean problem solved. It right. doesn't mean problem solved. It just means that now things are open up for people to go, more people to go in and fight that fight. So you have someone like Halima Aiden make the news because she's a covered Muslim woman, you know, who you know, is on the cover of Elle or, or Vogue Arabia or whatever it was she was on the cover of, I think it was Vogue. And then, then so that barrier is broken. And now I've seen, you know, a couple different fashion magazines featuring covered Muslim women as models. And it's just that they're a model in the magazine, you know? Yeah, they're a model in the magazine. I mean, you have models that actually are, are, are breaking down these barriers and, and becoming uh, uh, standards in industry like Leah Vernon, okay? Yeah. She is a curvy, covered Muslim woman, and she is she she has been in hot demand, <laughs> you know. But if that's what you want to do, if you want to be a model, you want to break into that. Yes, there's been fashion designers and everything like that. That's not busting a stereotype because the dominant members of the dominant society only see Leah Vernon, only see that model, only see that one news anchor woman, only see that. So that doesn't necessarily bust the stereotype down. That doesn't mean that because you're there, that now I have a clearer shot, okay? Mm -hmm. Because when they see me, they're not gonna still see, oh, you're a terrorist or you're this or you're that. When they see my black skin, they're not gonna see, they're not gonna think other things, you know? So yeah, there, there's, 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 there are exceptions yeah. that the dominant society will make, but that yeah. doesn't mean that you're breaking down a daggone thing in the dominant society. Okay, we have to stop looking at the specific and thinking that it's a general thing. And we have to, I, I think that in many ways, busting stereotypes for me has come become a stereotype because every time I see that busting stereotypes thing on a, a, on, on a headline or anything like that, I'm like, okay, what did she do? Chew gum and walk? <laughs> <laughs> So maybe what the maybe what the issue or not maybe but what maybe what the issue is is um these stories are going to continue to happen they are but like we need to make sure that we f we frame it or we when we share those stories or we talk about them that it's not that they're busting any stereotype there are some of them that are about breaking down barriers but like it's a story it's interesting what more can we do from it now mm -hmm. you know like Let's talk about her after this, you know, this article, like, what is she doing behind the scenes? How can we work with her? How can we do more? What other things have they been involved in before the story even came out? And how can we build off of that? Right. Mm -hmm. And stop like perpetuating on this idea that just because a covered Muslim woman was featured somewhere that some stereotype has been busted. Yeah. Because I think it comes back to what you said originally. 
we can't bust a stereotype when we're not the ones holding the stereotype. <laughs> but we can end up producing some of our own and yeah. that we engender, okay? And one of those things is that, you know, if you're covered and you chew gum, then you're fabulous. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. And, and, and a lot of times, unless the uh, person does something really, really extraordinary, okay, it is very much categorized in that Middle Eastern, South Asian cultural perspective. And so it's just like now you're reinforcing that too. So it's, it's reinforcing a mediocrity, a visual mediocrity, okay? Because Middle Eastern and South Asian Muslim women are doing some phenomenal things in the society that, that no one's turning a camera to or, 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 or a oh, yeah. microphone to or anything like that. Oh, yeah. And it, it ignores those women that would can definitely uh, be significant representation when it comes to us building our social capital and confidence. And it centers women that are not doing so much, you know? Okay. And so there's this whole idea that all Muslim women are good for, covered Muslim women are good for, okay? New stereotype is walking and chewing gum or plastering a lot of makeup on themselves and taking a picture or something like that. Yeah, you'll have those few exceptions, all right? But what is the what is the industry doing well, as far as the representation of Muslim women? Okay, how mediocre are those things that they're actually, those, those stories that they're actually highlighting? And relatively, most of the fabulous stuff Muslim women are doing is ignored. And there's a few stories of Muslim women who are doing things that are significant. But the majority of them is you're covered and you're pretty and you rode a skateboard or you rode a bike or something like that. I mean, yeah, I see where you're coming from. I mean, there's a the whole industry of, of being, you know, interest coming into us because of how we look is certainly a thing, you know, and then that leads to the ideas and the questions of, you know, why are you wearing a headscarf and why are you covered and what's the point of that? But then that's a whole other discussion for a different time, Layla. <laughs> but, um, you know, I think you're right. I think if we can, uh, you know, if we can, I'm not saying we shouldn't do these stories or we shouldn't help mainstream media or even like, you know, um, non-mainstream media pursue these stories. But I think the important thing is the framing of the stories and then what the what is the follow-up after you feature a particular Muslim woman doing something that's very interesting, you know? What's the follow-up? What, what comes after that? Are we gonna, you know, do more stories on that industry? Are we gonna talk to more women, you know, who are working in that mindset? Like if we feature, we feature a covered Muslim woman who's doing something extraordinary in the field of mental health, okay. But then after that, are we gonna do more stories about mental health and about other aspects of that? And, and you know, it's the follow-up for me. For me, it's, it's about, you know, taking that story and then where do I build upon that? Like, it's just not a one-time, it shouldn't be just a one-time thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now. Okay, and then we'll finish up. But that is one of the reasons why uh, I'm I'm so loving what you're doing at Hot Hijab with the blog. Okay, yeah. because here you have this you have this opportunity to really uh, have this pigeonholed, hackneyed approach to covering Muslim women, and you don't. Okay. So, yeah. I, I mean, it's a hijab company. So then it would be like, oh, this hijab is doing this, and this hijab is doing that, and busting stereotypes. If that <laughs> yeah, that's not what we're about. <laughs> <laughs> you, no know that's not what you, you know why that's not what you're about? Okay. Why? First of all, you're the editor. But also, <laughs> you. <laughs> <like that. laughs> I don't. <laughs> but also, um, the vibe that I've gotten from from the company, okay, itself, is that we're fabulous. Yeah. Okay. And we're just making this stuff so that you can go out there and just be fabulous and look fabulous. <laughs> I mean, from a product standpoint, yeah, it's about, you know, do you want, if you want to feel if, if you're seeking to feel stronger and more comfortable and empowered and, and, and fabulous and all that, we want to help you do it, right? Mm -hmm. From a 
one standpoint, that speaks to the whole like community aspect of the company. Like, like, so we, you know, like all companies have pillars and, and different things that they're built upon. And one of our pillars is community. And actually it's the first, when I interviewed at HH, it was the first pillar that was introduced to me was community. And I was kind of taken aback because I was like, well, I thought we were going to talk about product first. And I wasn't sure how I would fit into the company because I'm like, I've never worked for a commerce company before. I've always worked for me. I've always worked just strictly in the media. Right. And then the first pillar that was presented to me was community. And it was about, I want, we want the blog to reflect what's happening in Muslim communities, specifically Muslim women, you know, communities, you know, what are we grappling with? What are the issues that we're grappling with? What are lifestyle stories that we want to talk about? Who are women that we want to hear about, you know? Um, what are, uh, what are the news stories that perhaps our readers are, should be focusing on and they're not hearing about? Let's talk about that as well. What should we, what should we know? And, um, and all that good stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and I was like, okay, now I know where my place is. Now I know what I can do with this right now. I know that you want me to take this and run with this and to like really build it into that place where we're, we're doing exactly what you said. We're not just talking about you know, oh, she's covered and she did this. We do talk about that because, but then we talk about that. We try to talk about that and it's always a work in progress. We try to talk about that in a way that's leading into something more yeah. in depth. 